all respect to yeah. every specialty. Yeah. But who cares? We were, today is radiology day, okay? They're going to have their day soon. So what is the difference between the residents and the attending schedule? We're, we're actually on the same exact schedule as the attendings. What? Yeah. Dude, this is freaking awesome. Everything that you do is a puzzle and you're always figuring out a problem and the problems never stop and they're always so different. Yeah. You guys have no paperwork. And that's the best part. Rashid Nawaz, AKA Yasser Qadi's twin. He's a fourth year resident in radiology and he came onto my channel to help convince me why radiology is the best specialty in the medical field. If you came to this video even remotely interested, you might walk out fully convinced. You're welcome. Dr. Rashid. Assalamu alaikum, man. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you for coming in. I'm, I'm so glad to be able to talk to you. Uh, I know you're you're in your seat, your last year of residency. Second to last year. Second to last year. Okay, sweet. Um, and uh, you had some time that you were able to talk to us about radiology. Um, how's residency going so far? It's good, man. It's it's a lot better than I expected it to be, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Why do you say that? Well, just because, like, compared to, I guess, relatively speaking to, like, my friends and stuff who are, like, you know, in surgery or, like, internal medicine, like, fellowship at this point, like, I just feel like my lifestyle is a lot better than theirs. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, because, like, the, to like, the full expectation is that <laughs> you're coming in to grind yeah. morning to night, 6 to 8, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. type yeah. of deal. But for you, it's not like that. No, dude, our, our schedule is actually really good. Um, so typically what we do is we have a morning lecture yeah. that starts at 7.30 and that goes from 7.30 to 8.30 yeah. and then after that 8.30 to 12 is when we're like in the reading room whichever rotation that we're on we're basically reading all the studies pertaining to that section Yeah. and then 12 to 1 is like lunch and noon conference so like usually people just eat lunch and then we have another lecture at that time yeah. and then 1 to 4.30 is the exact same thing as the morning and then we're oh. done at 4.30 that's like an attending job almost <laughs> down here. That's yeah. smooth. Yeah, 7.30 to 4.30 every day, man. So what is the difference between the residence and the attending schedule? Is there not much a difference? or No, we're, we're actually on the same exact schedule as the attendings. Essentially. What? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. goodness. So that's like 40 hours a week or something. Like that. How many yeah. days a week do you work, I guess? So um, during your first year of residency, so R1, okay, yeah. um, you don't work any weekends. You don't work any call shifts until November. So essentially from July 1st to like the mid to end of November, you're just working Monday through Friday, no weekends, no evenings. Oh man. And then after that, that's when like you start taking like junior call. That's like in the, towards the end of your R1 year. So like after November to the end of that year. And then you start taking senior call. That's like when you start doing evenings and like weekends and things like that. But mm. for the most part, like your majority of your call is between your second and third years of residency. That's like the busiest year. Yeah. But then other than that, it's like right. it's pretty much Monday through Friday. And when you're talking about years of residency, you're not including intern year. No, not including intern year. So like okay. right now I'm a PGI four, but I consider sure. myself an R3, right? Cause right. I'm a third year. Okay, so that's also something unique about the residency of radiology is that you guys have a s completely separate intern year. Yep. Like you just do like general, like yeah, general medicine, working in the hospital mm -hmm. for some facility. Yeah. So like I did a transitional year. Um, mm. Yeah, so you can either do um, internship in general medicine, internal medicine. You can do it in pediatrics. You can do it in surgery, or you can do a transitional year, which is kind of like. It's kind of like third year of med school where you just like rotate through like different specialties. So I ended up doing like three months of wards, um, two months of ICU, and one month of surgery. And then like the other half of the year was basically just like electives that I wanted to do that year. So. Mm. And so is that kind of like fused into your curriculum or? Is no, that... it's, it's something that you have to apply for and match separately. So you have to go through two different matches. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Yeah. Is there not like... Um, like a combi like a combined residency program few, for residents? There are very few integrated okay. Like okay. radiology spots like that. But no, for the most part, you end up... And that's like true for other specialties like dermatology, ophthalmology, um, radiation oncology. So like all the TY people that I had in my class, like they mainly consist of those fields because they have to do the similar process. 
Mm. So can we talk about what are those specialties that should, you should have that kind of expectation for? Yeah, so, so radiology, radiology um, ophthalmology, um, even some anesthesia programs. Um, so I know I had a couple of co-interns who were going into anesthesia as Gotcha, well. okay. Um, dermatology, radiation oncology, um, PM&R is also one of them. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Essentially, like, anything that's, like, non-surgical and is subspecialized, they want you to do a general year of medicine. Mm. Make sure, like, you know how to be a basic doctor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that make, okay, that's, that's pretty interesting. That sounds like another stressful <laughs> application It, it can cycle. be, it can be, because, like, it, you essentially, like, have to apply to, like, a whole separate set of programs, right? Exactly. And, like, you have to go on those interviews, which if you're not, like, you know, going to a different, a specific location, you're interviewing all over the place, that can obviously, like, um, take a toll in terms of expenses. Now it's different because most things are virtual, but, like, when I was doing it, like, that was something I had to take into account. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so... Um, so someone could end up doing their intern slash transitional year in Colorado yeah. and then end up doing their three-year radiology residency four, or four-year, four yeah. sorry, four-year radiology residency yeah. back home yeah. or somewhere else. Right. So like what I did was I'm from Chicago, so I wanted to do my internship in Chicago because it's like I just want a year to like live close to my family. Yeah. Yeah. So I did, I did my um, transitional year at like one of the ho daughter hospitals of Loyola. It's called McNeil. Mm. I did that for a year, and then I moved here after that. Okay. That's really cool, man. Yeah. It's also nice because, like, if you want to do, like, an internship in, like, Hawaii for, like, a year or something, yeah. you have that option, right? That's pretty you spend cool. a year there and then go back to wherever you're going to go for the next couple of years. And then so you kind of just, like, because, like, typically the year starts around July. Yeah. So season starts July. First day starts mm -hmm. in July. That September, you have to re submit another application for – Residencies. No, you, you do everything together. Everything, oh, everything is, in your, everything is in your fourth year. Oh, perfect. Yeah, okay, so yeah. this is all. This is actually still a one shot. Yeah, thing. it's it's all like the same ERS application. Okay, okay, it's the same cycle. You just get like two areas where you matched on your letter, basically. Okay. Yeah. Thank God. Okay, yeah. so that that is yeah, still kind of no, that would be rough if you had to like go through it all. Like, yeah, you know, dude. Imagine like doing your whole transitional year. You don't know like if you have a spot somewhere. No. That would no, be tough. Yeah, that would be rough. Okay. 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 So at least before when you get well, during match day as an M4 medical student, mm -hmm. you will get like your results that show yeah. like oh I'm going to spend a year at this spot, but then I have to do my my. Yeah. Uh, residency if you're lucky because like, some people like they may match into one but not match into the other right so like say for oh, example yeah. like you match into an internship but you don't match into like whatever specialty you're going to so you know where you're going for one year but then you have to apply the next year to figure out where you're going to go mm -hmm. after that or it could be vice versa where you know i'm doing anesthesia at this program but i didn't match a transitional year which actually happens because ty's are really competitive because you're that makes total sense because right, you're applying like you're oh, the people who are like you're are like dermatologists exactly. and yeah, yeah 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 so um yeah that can happen where you like you know where you're going but then you got to like soap into like a general surgery spot or like gotcha. a general medicine spot yeah okay yeah. um but I've, i is there like plenty though as opposed to like other cuz i don't know there's no like relative measurement that we have in terms of spots so like when we talk about transitional year positions yeah are they they're competitive yeah. because there's low quantity yeah. or because of the competitive like uh, nature of applicants. Both. Oh, really? Yeah. There yeah. are not as many. Like there are way more general medicine spots, way more surgical internship spots than TYs. Shoot. So you just yeah. have to ent enter the soap and pray that you find a spot. Otherwise, you just have to re-enter the like what would you do with your Most people end up like soaping into a general surgery spot cuz those are like really like available like pretty much anywhere oh so it doesn't have to be some specific transitional year no it program. doesn't it doesn't no okay. that's what i'm saying like you could do it as a ty year which most people want to do because those are the most chill you could do a uh, general internal medicine year um you can do a general surgery year okay. and even pediatrics i think you can do but those are fewer i think okay yeah. sweet i'm really glad you explained this yeah. to me because i don't understand this like transitional year versus yeah. like intern year like, I mean, intern year is obviously just your first year of mm -hmm. whatever program, right? So you have to do a PGY-1 before you can start a PGY-2 in any of those specialties. Right. Whether it's a TY in internal medicine year or 
general surgery or doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. What about general medicine? Yeah, those... Um, could you do that? Like, you could. For one a lot of, most people do that. I yeah, that sounds yeah. better to me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Surgery is <laughs> kind of like... <laughs> I don't know, bro. I'm telling you, like, the surgery field, like, it's very scary if you're not going to do it. Like, if you're not going to do surgery, yeah. being in that environment mm -hmm. could be very intimidating. No, that's true. And even for internal medicine, like, because a lot of these internal medicine internship spots are, like, big academic medical centers, right? So if you're not necessarily going to be doing that, like you're going to be in for like a pretty tough year, right? Because you're seeing like very complex patients. Um, you're seeing like all the pathology, like all the rare stuff. Whereas like these TY programs are usually in like smaller community hospitals. So it's more just like bread and butter medicine. Like I remember like when I was doing wards on like the three, four months that I did wards, it was basically just like um, heart failure, like MI, which like would go to the cardiac service anyway. And like, you know, like cellulite, it's just like things like bread and butter things that right, like you right, see right. very commonly. Um, so it, it's kind of nice in that sense too, because sure, like, yeah. you know, if you're not going into internal medicine, like why do you need to know how to manage like diabetic ketoacidosis, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like you need to know like the basics of medicine. And the, I think that's pretty good in terms of what you get as a TY. Yeah, yeah. I completely agree. That sounds awesome. Um, so sounds good. So you did your transition year in Chicago. Mm -hmm. that, that sounds... You made it actually more appealing yeah. <laughs> when you said, like, yeah, I kind of just want to have this. Because, like, it's true. Like, if you're doing a competitive specialty like radiology, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about that, um, then um, you, you, sometimes you don't really get the luxury of be, having this special yeah. residency program done in your hometown. Yeah. So, and it was great, man. Like, I, I, it was a little bit rough in the sense that that's when COVID was, like, really up and, like, causing havoc like yeah. throughout the country so they did have us do like an extra month of ICU just to help out which mm -hmm. was kind of rough but other than that like I got to do a bunch of different electives like I got to do um a PMNR elective I got mm -hmm. to see like what that was about I got to do um a dermatology elective I got to do a medical Spanish elective, yeah, which what? Was, yeah, just like learning like med common like phrases in medical Spanish. Do you have any background in Spanish? No, no, no. <laughs> 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 and like, I'm probably never going to use Spanish as a radiologist because right. I'm not dictating. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. But it's just like that's kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. it's just like a unique opportunity, you know. And these are like chill rotations too, so it's not like stressful at right, all. Right. So it was, it was nice. That's yeah. awesome. I would recommend. That's awesome. It. Oh, but there is, like, the other viewpoint of, especially in radiology, where people say that doing a surgery internship, even though it's really rough, actually benefits you a lot as a radiology resident. Mm -hmm. The reason being is that, like, when you're reading, like, a complex post-operative scan, having, like, knowledge of what the actual procedure entails and, like, what the surgeon is looking for, what mm -hmm. kind of complications they're expecting, all of that information, um, like, reading the scan, it, it actually benefits you a lot. Because you're familiar with like all the surgical approaches, you're familiar with the anatomy, what it looks like on radiology, as well as what it looks grossly like in the operating room. So a lot of people, like in my program especially, did a surgical internship, and they said that it was like extremely hard, but they think that it was worth it. So, kind of just depends on like where you lie. For me, like yeah, maybe it, it takes you a couple more months to get used to like reading those scans right? Um, and like learning like about the surgical background, but I would rather do that than do yeah. a year of <laughs> surgical internship. <laughs> Dude, I hear you on yeah. that, yeah. All right, man, that's awesome. So I, I need you to really convince me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why, is, why should I go into radiology, man? Yeah. I, think, I think this is the most difficult choosing a specialty is the most difficult thing mm. in the world man because um you have so many different options and there's a lot of overlap in the you know um of good characteristics you mm. know um for me for example uh having having a good work-life balance is very important and i see that in so many different fields and i'm starting to realize that even the ones that are traditionally looked at to have good work-life balance you can still make it happen mm. So I want to r truly be convinced. I, I like all respect to yeah. every specialty, yeah. right? But who cares? We were, <laughs> today is radiology day, yeah. okay? They're going to have their day soon. <laughs> so talk to me. What is your, just starting off, what is like your elevator's pitch to why yeah. radiology is the best field? Well, I think it's, 
I'll, I'll take you through like my thought process okay. and kind of like what I experienced as a med student. Bet. And you know, you can see if you relate to any of this and okay. um, you know, if so, then maybe this is like a good field for you to go into as well. All right. Okay. So when I started off medical school, like first and second year, I really enjoyed it. So I was so interested in the pathology, like learning about the disease processes, like all of the anatomy, mm. all of the physiology that goes behind it. Like it was really fascinating to me. Like mm. this is the reason why this disease happens and it manifests with these symptoms. And like, these are the laboratory markers. This is like the radiological like as manifestation of the disease. Like I really enjoyed making the diagnosis, right? Mm. And that's essentially what you're doing in first and second year, right? You're learning how to diagnose the disease. Really, the treatment stuff comes later, right? You learn mm -hmm. that in the majority of your third and fourth years, mm -hmm. um, actual clinical medicine, right? Yeah. So I realized that when I got into, like, third and fourth year that I didn't enjoy, like, the clinical aspect of it as much as I thought I would. I was more so interested in, like, what's going on with this patient. Like, I always gravitated towards those patients were, which were, like, a medical mystery, you know? Like, yeah. we don't know what's wrong with this patient and, like, trying to piece together that like puzzle, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. like that kind of like was always at the back of my mind as I rotated through all the magical specialties. I just really didn't feel like as satisfied as I thought I would like actually like figuring out what's going on and then like treating the patient because you know, there's a lot of other things that are going on with the patient, right? Like it's not just the disease that you're treating, you're also treating the patient. And that comes with a lot of like socioeconomic things, a lot of social factors, you know, like even if you had the ability to treat a patient and had the ability to cure their disease, they might not be able to receive that treatment, right? Because of other factors, like they don't have a space that they can actually take care of themselves and they don't have people to help them out. They don't have anywhere to live, you know? So like a lot of those things, I like didn't really, you know, it didn't really make me feel satisfied because you can do as much as you want, but if you don't actually like help out the patient in terms of what they need, like their socioeconomic status or whatever, you're not actually like curing them of anything, right? Mm. So for me, it was like a lot of the social things, especially like on internal medicine, where you're like, a lot of the time you're trying to figure out like where the patient is gonna be placed or like calling like nursing homes or like LTACs and like, just like coordinating that care, like that didn't really like, uh, uh, you know, like appeal to me that much. Yeah. I always found myself like, I wanna figure out what's going on with the patient more so than anything else. Right. And then as I was like rotating through every specialty, another thing that I was considering was, do I really want to like focus on one thing for the rest of my life? You know, cause mm. like initially I was considering like maybe opto, uh, I was considering GI or like um, not really anything surgical. Cause I knew from like early on that I wasn't like a surgical personality. And then the other question I asked myself was like, do I want to know like a lot about everything or do I want to just like focus on one thing, you know? So that kind of led me towards either ER or radiology, mm. right? Because those are, people might not think that those are similar, but they actually are in a lot of ways, right? Mm. Because you're seeing a patient, you're figuring out what's going on with them. You can either treat them right away or you can send them to somewhere that they are going to receive the care that they need, right? Either admitted right. or like a consult or whatever. And I, I just like the turnover, the pace of it, where it's like, figure out what's going on, on to the next one, figure out what's going on, on to the next one, right? Yeah. And then I was like, well, what about radiology, right? Because you see probably the most patients in the hospital of any specialty, right? You're reading yeah. 100 to 120 scans a day. That's 120 patients that you've seen, essentially. So, and I was like, well, do I like the, the lifestyle of ER? Not really. You're going to be working nights, you know, throughout your whole life. And it's just like the circadian rhythm thing that yeah. appeal to me. So I was like, all right, well, radiology it is then, <laughs> you know, because oh. at the end of the day, like what you're doing as a diagnostic radiologist is you are doing puzzles all day, right? right. You have a patient's right. information in front of you. Yes. You have access to their H&P. You have access to their physical exam, not directly, but like through what's documented in the note. You have access to all their labs. You have access to imaging, which now in today's day and age is essentially the physical exam of the patient. And you're coming up with the diagnosis. You're giving your recommendation to the clinician and then you're moving on to the next patient. And that's just like so much more satisfying to me as a doctor where I'm having like these intelligent conversations with other physicians and I feel comfortable having a conversation with a cardiologist, then a urologist, then a nephrologist, you know, like every single specialty, you essentially have something to contribute towards. 
And yeah. at the end of the day, that's what I find satisfying. That's what I find really intellectually stimulating. And I think that's what brings me the most joy at work compared to anything else. Dude, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> so you're, th oh my God, everything that you do is a puzzle. Yeah. And you're always figuring out a problem and the problems never stop and they're always so different. Yeah. And you have a lot of uh, other doctors that you get to like interact and mm -hmm. think with yeah. as well to come up with a yeah. plan and then you move on to the next. Yeah. I like the ER medicine comparison. Yeah. What, what about pathology though? Right, so pathology was also something I was thinking about. Um, it's, it's also similar, but I think the scope is a little bit more limited. Oh, um, because that's, that makes sense. Essentially, like what you're doing is you're diagnosing, you're diagnosing based off of like surgical specimens or biopsies and that, that kind of limits itself to like a certain subspecialty of patients. Mostly it's like cancer um, and things like that, right? Whereas right. radiology, like you can deal with trauma, you can deal with post-surgical, you can deal with cancer. Um, so I, I just found that the scope was more in line of what I was looking for in radiology than pathology. That, yeah, that totally makes sense, yeah. actually. Um, I, I know that that is probably one of the most funnest things about being a doctor yeah. is like figuring out mm -hmm. someone's problem. Yeah. Because I remember there was, a store, there was a time when I did the surgery um, mm -hmm. I was in a, I, I was complete, I was like a med student in a rotation. I was doing surgery mm -hmm. and, um, it was a very undifferentiated case. Yeah. We didn't know we had some thoughts, mm -hmm. but we couldn't know for sure until after we looked inside and, you know, and figured things out from mm -hmm. there. So it was like, it was kind of that I was already kind of hyped about that case. Yeah. I was like, Holy yeah. crap. You know, this isn't just some random, you yeah. know, uh, situation. I mean, it's not some. Not random. I mean to say that this isn't the bread and butter case, mm -hmm. right? It wasn't like the normal case that I saw like yeah. pretty much almost every yeah. day. So I was hyped about yeah. it. And when we went inside, we were just like so surprised at what we saw. Mm. And we had, so what was so exciting to me was when they said, all right, we're going to take a piece of this like specimen. Mm -hmm. Yusuf, take it down to the yeah. pathology lab. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and they were on the phone with the pathologist yeah. to like like mm -hmm. discuss what the situation was. Yeah. And so they came up with a plan of what to biopsy. We biopsied it. I went down there and everybody in that lab was so excited. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh my God, it's it's the blank, you know, yeah. it's the disease process, yeah. you know? It was uh so it was so we looked at the sample and we figured out what the disease was. I came mm -hmm. back and then the the rush went away, you know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like that was, that was like the funnest part though. Yeah. I was like, Oh my God, we figured yeah. out the problem, you know, yeah. now we, you know, have to, we have to close up and, uh, yeah. you know, so like that, patient. that patient that you're describing, that's like something we see every single day. Exactly. In because right. like when essentially what happens is the, the, the term that's been used is like the radiologist is the doctor's doctor, right? Mm -hmm. So like when clinical teams, like they don't really know what's going on, they come to the radiology reading room and they try to figure out and we try to like kind of talk through what the differential could be, right? And that can either like guide them towards one pathway that they weren't thinking about at all, or we could like go through a, a biopsy plan with them or like a surgical approach, you know? So like that, that type of situation that you're describing is like something that we see on a day-to-day -day basis, right? Because we're not just limited towards one specialty, right? Mm -hmm. You see the most interesting patients in the hospital. They're all getting images, right? So mm -hmm. you all end up coming through the radiology reading room at one point or another. And you have access to all these different specialties who are coming in and asking you questions. And you're having that discussion with them. And that's just like more satisfying to me than, you know, like going out and like treating CHF for like the hundredth time, you know? <laughs> oh my God, that yeah. is awesome. So let's just round up, let's round up all the pros to being a radiologist okay. that I collected all beforehand. Right. <laughs> so all the things you said was great. Uh, moreover, uh, you guys have a lot of immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys have no paperwork. Yes, absolutely. That's awesome. No documentation. That's the best part. So but how do you show your work? Well, what, what is your work that you okay. have to show? Yeah, yeah. So essentially what we do is um, we have two separate things. So one is the PAC system, which is where the actual images are pulled up. And there's another thing called the dictation software, which is, um, you've seen like a dictaphone. A yeah. lot of people in internal medicine use it too. Um, so we are basically going through the images at the same time, 
we have templates for all the reports. So like if I'm reading a CT of the head versus a CT of the abdomen or pelvis, there's a separate template for that, okay? And as I'm going through those images, I'm basically dictating at the same time, filling out that template. Mm. And then once I'm done, I just look over the report, make sure that there's no dictation errors, everything I wanted to say is there. And then you just sign off the report, you close the study and that's it. There's mm. no typing, there's no note taking. Mm. Like there's nothing I have to do in Epic besides just looking for the clinical history. So mm. I never have to like write a progress note. I never Dude. ever have to write a discharge summary. No Dude. HMPs, nothing like that. It's just your dictation, which is like seamlessly integrated into like, as you're looking at the images, you're dictating at the same time. So That is actually yeah. a huge plus. Yeah. Uh, there is also uh, manageable stress. Mm. But I was thinking, isn't it super stressful to have like 300 images to like look yeah. at that kind of list all the time? It, it can be, um, especially overnight. So when you're in your second and third year uh, residency, you're taking overnight call. You're mm. the only radiologist in the hospital mm. overnight that's covering UW, um, Meritor, like pediatric NICU. You're covering EMH. You're covering the VA. You're covering children's, right? So that's a lot of volume that you're reading. Oh my God. But that just comes with the territory. Like you get, you get better, you get faster, mm. you get more confident. Mm. Um, <laughs> because I know there's like a joke that like people say, oh, radiologists always hedges are always like, could be this, could be that. That's be so this. true. Like, that, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> but the, the reality is that there are a lot of findings and imaging that you can see with multiple diseases, right? right so right, there's right. no way for you to come down to one thing. I, I, you know? I call it intellectual honesty. That's what <laughs> yeah. it is. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. But, you know, the better radiologist, instead of listing eight different things, will come down to maybe two or three, right? That are reasonable differentials based off of the labs, based off of the clinical history, the physical exam, right? So that, like, you get better at becoming more precise. That comes with experience, right? Gotcha. If you've seen something that looks like this, 50 times like you get you're gonna know that this is what this is most likely right yeah, yeah, yeah. so that that's just like a junior versus a senior radiologist you can tell the difference Sweet. um but yeah um so the the stress you know it it, it gets better mm -hmm. um as a radiology resident you're not reading as much like an attending will be able to crush a list like they'll mm. there'll be like 100 scans on the list like they'll be gone like this Whereas, like, as a resident, like, you, you're going slow, obviously, right? Yeah, 100%. But it's just, like, with all things in medicine, right? The more you do it, the better you get at it. So yeah. it's just become muscle memory at a certain point. That's true. That's true. Yeah. All right. Um, you can work from home. Yeah. You're, you're, you guys are the only specialty in all of medicine to be able to do your job in pajamas. Yeah. <laughs> that's no, kind that's, of really That's cool. very true. Um, there's, like, people that, you know, like, have houses in Hawaii Sometimes they'll like be living there. I know like there's one person that um, basically like winters in Arizona and like comes here um, during the summers and like they have flexibility. Like one person got married and their fiance was living in Chicago. So they moved to Chicago and they're still working here. Mm. Like they just come here maybe like once a month whenever they're on call and have to be here in person. Yo. But it, it opens up the opportunities a lot in terms of geographic yes. location because you can work for like and that, that also, like, makes a difference in terms of, like, the state that you want to practice in, right? Because, like, mm -hmm. if you want to practice in a state where the income is higher, like, malpractice premiums are lower, um, you can, and you can live somewhere else if you wanted to, you know? So it, it That's just, like, crazy. It opens up, like, the possibilities, like, Oh, my God. Yeah. Can I, okay, wait a second. Can I, like, live in Kenya but still have like a US, <laughs> USD yeah, salary? Yeah, there's, Actually? Yeah, as long as you're, you're board certified, you have like all the accreditation, like you're an American graduate. Um, you're basically like legally allowed to work in the United States as a physician. It doesn't really matter where you live. Dude. Uh, you, you'll have to work different time zone, but as yeah. long as the, the studies are getting read in a timely fashion. What I can just do like an overnight, like even if like, let's say we did have similar time zones or it was a little iffy. Yeah. I can just do like overnight. Yeah. I can be like overnight radiologist yeah. and like during the day of Kenya, yeah, <laughs> you know, so exactly. I don't know if that time zone actually like matches <laughs> up, but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that's kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. All oh, you need man. is a computer, monitor, and some good Wi-Fi. <laughs> that's it. Exactly. Okay, the Wi-Fi might be iffy, though. <laughs> 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 all right, all right, cool. You guys have shift work, which we talked a little yeah. bit about. Mm -hmm. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. So um, radiology, top, 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 tier, uh, top tier field. 
um, it's also one of the road specialties. Mm -hmm. You're actually, I think, the first uh, specialty I'm talking to that's mm -hmm. part of the quote unquote road, road specialties, yeah. right? <laughs> road is um, radiology, ophthalmology, mm -hmm. um, or ortho. I don't know. Actually, ophthalmology. It's ophthalmology, yeah. um, anesthesiology, mm -hmm. and dermatology. dermatology. Those are like the the stereotypical good work life balance mm -hmm. uh, jobs yeah. that also make um, like a really good amount of money. Yeah. So that's awesome. All right, so let's talk about uh, the pillars to choosing specialty. Mm -hmm. um, so what is the unique skill uh, or specialty of, the, uh, of radiology? Mm -hmm. So you're essentially a, a master of anatomy. You're a master of um, imaging, medical imaging. Okay, so that, that also like entails like interpretation of images, but also you're really good at how images are acquired, so a lot of the physics behind that, a lot of the radiation dose. Um, so you you learn all of that in residency, how to minimize dose to patient. You know what the type, in what type of imaging is best to answer a clinical question, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you know for an MRI, there's certain specific scenarios where that would be better than a CT versus an X-ray. Right? Yeah, yeah. So as radiologists, you learn you learn all of those things, also the physics behind it. And like why things Ooh. happen, right? Do you need to know a lot of physics? You do need to know a lot of physics, yeah. Really? Which, oh, dude, which... I'm not good at physics. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the the good thing is that a lot of it is like clinical based, right? So it's yeah, it's yeah. things that are actually important and make a difference, you know? Because right. if there's an artifact that you're seeing and it's messing with the ability to interpret an image, you need to know how to go to the machine and like figure out what's going on, what's causing that, right? Right, right. Here, right. obviously, like we have a dedicated medical physics team that is really good and help out with a lot of image acquisition and maintaining optimum image quality. But like if you're working out, you know, in the middle of nowhere, like here you need to know how to do those things yourself, oh, yeah. right? Yeah. That's so, pretty cool. Yeah. So essentially, you're a master of anatomy, master of imaging, and you're also pretty highly knowledgeable about essentially any field. Um, in medicine, right? Because you have to be, you yeah. have to know like every single disease process that affects any organ, MSK, neuro, abdominal, chest, all of that. You have yeah, to know everything Yeah. because yeah. you never know what you're going to see next. Right? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, I was going to say something about that. What was I going to say? Um, oh, I was going to actually say, um, if someone's super interested in technology, mm -hmm. radiology would also be a field for that too, right? 100%. You guys have like the yeah, most technology yeah, that you have to deal yeah. with. And I would say like our, our research is actually like probably the most innovative like out of any specialty because oh. a lot of it is informatics driven, right? A lot of it is data driven, right? Yeah, so yeah, like yeah. AI is just like one example, right? That's like the cutting edge of like what is pushing the limits of what, you know, like machines can do at this point in time, mm. right? So you're, a lot, you're involved in that, not so much like bench research, you know, which obviously is important, but like these are things that can have clinical impact very quickly like right. once you are working on those types of things. And like we have people who are like informatics specialists. So if that's something that you're interested in, like you're interested in, in data and like coding and things like that, there is a place for you in radiology to be able to use right. those skills. Right, right. Yeah. Um, that's really cool. Uh, Extracurricular, we know we talked about how research is, is mm -hmm. big in radiology. Yeah. And also you guys there's a lot of uh um there's a lot of education slash mm -hmm. academic yeah. um work that you can do as a radiologist yeah. as well. That one's pretty yeah. No, that's that's true. Um radiology is important or, or in research I should say is important in radiology, but it's not a must have. Like yeah. as a medical student, I didn't do a lot of research in radiology, um, but I was still able to match. Yeah. Um, I didn't have much experience at all, actually, in, in research. Oh. Um, so it's, it's something that is a nice to have, but it's not a must have. Sure. Um, there are other things that, you know, essentially you should do whatever you're passionate about. Right. Yeah. I think yeah, like yeah, yeah. doing a bunch of research that you're not passionate about is it's actually worse than doing like something that you're actually very passionate about. Because people can tell that you're just doing it to check boxes versus you're actually interested in this and that's why sure. you're pursuing it. But um, other things, um, I know like especially at our institution, um, radiology plays a big role in terms of medical student teaching. It's so, like anatomy oh, and yeah. things like that. Oh, so yeah. a lot of the radiologists are running those courses. You know, so, That's really cool. Yeah, because like I said, it all goes back to like first and second year of med school. Like I think a lot of radiologists are drawn more towards those years because... That's kind of what we're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. So it makes sense that we're the ones that are helping to 
facilitate education in those years as well. Yeah, that makes total sense. I think that's really cool because I think teaching is definitely something I want to get into some way or shape yeah. or form. Yeah. Either in the medicine field or in like religion or something like that. I, I want to definitely do teaching. So I think that's really cool to have that. That that's definitely on the top of my mind. Yeah. If that's like a uh, an opportunity, mm-hmm. uh, patient contact and continuity. Uh, as far as I know, you guys have <laughs> none of that. <laughs> so, so that's actually a myth. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we actually have a decent amount of patient contact, and it it really depends on what you want to do, right? So we do a lot of procedures as a diagnostic radiologist. You're doing biopsies, you're doing thoracentesis, you're doing paracentesis. You're doing thyroid FNAs. You're doing lumbar punctures, all image guided. Um, you're also doing like a lot of fluoroscopic procedures, so like swallow studies, mm. like so. These are a lot, a lot of quick procedures. Yeah, you, a lot of quick do. procedures. Um, but for me, I think that's like more than enough. Like yeah, I just yeah. want to like, you know, see a patient, do a procedure, make sure they're doing mm. okay after that. Let them go home the same day. You know. Right. Right. Um, another field, mammography, is where you have probably the most patient contact. Because okay. these are patients where you're doing a diagnostic mammogram, you're doing an ultrasound, um, you're doing biopsies and procedures and things like mm. that, and you're also like interacting with them, counseling them as well, right? Because okay. obviously it's very difficult when you have to give a patient a diagnosis that this is most likely going to be cancer, yeah. right? So you have to have those people skills and to be able to interact with them and you know counsel them and make them feel comfortable and safe and right. like they're in good hands right so you can do as much as you want you can do as little as you want if you say like i just want to read images you can have no patient contact and that's what you want go for it right. if you want to do procedures you can you can have that like short interactions um, which i think for me is like better than having like long term interactions where like you're constantly getting messages from patients and this and that like yeah you know so that's just what what that's that's really good to know that's really good to know um last thing is work-life balance and earning potential yeah last two things Mm -hmm. um work-life balance um well how would you grade it like let's say say grade a is like dermatology family medicine Mm -hmm. you know primary care in other words um uh a lot. What I've learned last time was ER medicine is really solid for work-life balance. Um, if you if you can get if you're okay with the scheduling issue, yeah. and then grade D is I don't want to I don't want to say any any specific <laughs> specialty. But actually, no, no, I can think of a really good ones. Um, like specialized surgeries are known for like really difficult work-life balance. Like if mm. they're more on the low end, mm-hmm. um, you certainly would not choose those careers for work-life balance. And yeah. that's like vascular surgery mm-hmm. or uh, thoracic slash yeah. cardiothoracic, yeah. Yeah. yeah, neurosurgery. Okay, so what would you grade on on that scale? I'm gonna go out and say that radiology has the best work life balance out of all of them. I'll really? give you a couple of reasons why. Okay, so dermatology, let's say for example, yeah. that's a primarily clinic based specialty, right? Yeah. So you can be seeing twenty to thirty to maybe even forty patients a day, depending on how busy your practice is, right? Mm. And that's not just like seeing a patient, right? Because you can see a patient maybe in like five, ten minutes, but that's also like writing the notes, which a lot of people, if they don't have scribes, like they end up doing at home. After they get home, they have to write all their notes for the day. That includes getting like messages from patients on secure chat after hours, especially if you're in primary care. Even though your clinic hours are like eight to five, right? on a Saturday morning, if your patient is like having a symptom, they're going to message you first, right? Yeah. So that all takes away from work-life balance, I think. Um, even though you have a set schedule, you don't really, because you're either always thinking about someone that you saw that day, or you have to write their notes, or you're getting messages from patients about refills and things of that nature. Whereas radiology is, you are you have those same hours, 8 to 4.30, but after you sign the final report for that day, you don't have to think about work at all completely shut out work like mm. no one is going to message you like hey can you take another look at this yes right? yes, yes there's a night radiologist true for that. shift work yeah yeah so like the worst thing that can happen in radiology is that 359 a complex disaster scan comes through yeah maybe you spend like 15 20 minutes extra looking at it you end up leaving at 4 30 oh right and that's just like so great for me it's like i don't have to think about work when i go home Right. And yeah, like ER has those same like shift works, but the amount of toll that it takes to like do a full 10 hour ER shift, I think like compared to a 10 hour radiology shift 
it's like not comparable. You're right, like right. in the comfortable you're in a comfortable reading room. Right. You're eating snacks, you got right. music playing or whatever. Like yes. you're just in a chill environment. No one is screaming. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Okay. How about this? Anesthesiology. Anesthesiology, it's it's good. I would say, but again, like it's surgical hours in the sense that you have to yeah. get up early, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You like, guys are like working doing, at eight thirty. Yeah, we get there. Attendings get there at eight thirty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, eight thirty. They're out by five, four thirty. Um, so they're not working overnights here. We have residents that work overnights, right? They're not. They do work some weekends, um, but that's like divided amongst the sections. So then maybe they're working like five or six weekends a year, mm. right? So I, I think. You know, in terms of like the hours, in terms of like not taking work home with you, in terms of like not being stressed out when you get home, uh, like I don't think radiology can be beat in that regard, man. I love that. I yeah. love that, man. Thank you. Okay, so that's that's really that's really cool. Um, in terms of the average compensation, mm -hmm. you guys, I'm looking at the Doximity report um, that was released recently, the most recent one and radiology average compensation is $500,000. Do, do, do you, does that number not shock you at all? Like that's no, 100%. actually I will say that that is very, that's like an average number, right? Cause yeah. like, yeah, it obviously depends on multiple different factors. So like, Oh, you can see a lot more being easily yeah. made. And the thing is the radiology job market right now is booming. Like, we need more radiologists, way more radiologists. Because the amount of imaging, it's just skyrocketing, man. Like, I'm telling you, like, our program director has meetings with us. And they say, like, the percentage increase, like, is insane compared to just five years ago. How much imaging the ER is ordering, how much imaging, like, other clinicians are ordering. And, like, especially with, like, the, um, you know, like, the big movement of, like, mid-level providers, a lot of them are utilizing imaging a lot as well. So, like, the amount of volume is almost to the point where, like, we need more help. <laughs> like, oh my we God. need way more radiologists. Um, I remember, like, um, I was in the reading room one day um, in the chest section, and it was, like, 10 in the morning. And so we'd been there for, like, two hours at that point. And the attending said that I've read 30 CTs already at this point. And back in the day when I was training, that would be an entire day's worth of scans. Yeah, so, like, within two hours, like, he's already passed that. So it's just, just like getting more oh, and more man. like imaging is yeah. like becoming such a workhorse in medicine. Like I said before, like it, it is the physical exam essentially, right? Yeah. Like every yeah. patient that comes through the ER is going to get some type of imaging one way or another. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So the demand is insane right now to the point where maybe like five, 10 years ago, people were, were doing two fellowships after residency. So like they were doing two things. They were getting like MSK radiology under their belt. They were doing a fellowship in neuro just to get a decent job. Whereas now, people will hire you without a fellowship just because they need radi radiologists. Interesting. Yeah. How long ago was that? Like when you were entering radiology? Mm -hmm. So like yeah. this is four years later. So when I was entering, that's when the job market was getting hot. Now oh, it's just like continuously okay. increasing okay. ever more demand. Yeah. How long ago was it where you... Because like I recently... I mean, another student, yeah. like obviously just another student yeah. just told me that, yeah, in radiology, you need to do a fellowship uh, so how long ago, what do you think that, that was? That was probably like, I would say like 10 years ago. About 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, it was like when the job market was kind of tight. Yeah. And now it's it's like the floodgates are open, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, like I have people in my class who are not doing fellowships. They're just going straight to work. Because, wow. And also depends on location, right? So like 500 is actually, that's probably what you're going to be making in like a big city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you, I know people who've like gone to like North Dakota um, like rural areas and they're making like 800, 900 to a million. And that, that is with 12 to 14 weeks of vacation a year. Oh man. Yeah. Wait, you said 12? 12 weeks of vacation a year. That's like. That's most, three months. Yeah. A, a month uh, or a week a month, basically you have off. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what, like, most private Epitome practices... Epitome of work-life balance and earning <laughs> potential. Like, there's, there's nothing... There, I don't think that really beats that, honestly. Yeah. Like, I was actually shocked, man. Like, 12 to 14 weeks is a ton of vacation. Like, I don't even know what to do with all that time off. <laughs> I mean... Well, actually, I do. I'll just do it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's yeah. really awesome. So, if you wanted to... Like, really, what I'm hearing is, like, you can... 
you can have an entire almost you can have an entire life outside of radiology and you don't really have to worry about the paycheck mm-hmm. um, when it comes to because uh, honestly you could work most jobs part-time but yeah. some people are forced to work full-time because of the paycheck mm-hmm. that's not going to be a limiting factor for someone no. who chose this specialty no. and the caveat to that is that what i'm quoting is for private yeah. practice right Right, for, right, for right, academic, right. it's going to be a little bit lower. Yeah. It's going to be probably like 100K lower. Mm-hmm. Um, vacation is probably going to be lower, but that's offset, you know, with like the time you get off academic right. days and like time off for conferences and things like that. But as like a general private practice radiologist, like you can expect like 8 to 12 weeks to even up to 14 weeks. That's that's crazy. They're, they're all, but oh, it should also be said, private practice typically have like much higher call rates too, right? Isn't that true? Uh, it depends on how big the practice is, right? So yeah. if you have a practice of like maybe only four or five people, then you're going to be taking call Q4, Q5. But like most practices nowadays are like big enough where it spaces out pretty evenly. Wait, is that the, that's the, that's the most difficult end where like, where it's like every four to five weeks? Yeah, or do you I, mean Q4 for five days, or what do you mean? Uh, so it depends on, like, how they split things, you know? So, yeah. like, they might have, um, like, one person covering evenings for a week, right? Yeah. They might, and, like, other most private practices, I would say, have, like, a night hawk service where they actually hire night radiologists who only read nights. Gotcha. To cover their overnights. And they'll just, like, split the weekends amongst the partners. Understood. There are. Yeah, so the bigger the practice, the less call you're going to have to take. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. I, I decided to ask uh, Chad GPT, what, what do you have to say about the cons to the field? And um, it came up with some, some good stuff. Okay. And I want to hear your reactions to it. Yeah. So number one is limited patient interaction, which we talked about already. It's up to you how much, yeah. you, want or how much you want and desire. Yep. High volume of studies. Yeah. I think that is a true con when it comes like like obviously you said you'll get better as you get mm-hmm. you know as you progress in your years yeah. of experience yeah. but you you can expect walking in these days to like doing at least like 200 300 image interpretations yeah. a day that's the thing though um so yeah we do have uh 8 to 4:30 like time frame of our job but we're busy. Yeah, you guys time. are grinding. Like, there's no time. Like, I remember when, during my internship, like, I would literally finish my notes by noon and, like, go take a nap. Because, like, there's nothing to do, right? Mm. There's, like, unless I got paged for, like, a patient, unless I was on call that day and getting admits, like, you're kind of just sitting around waiting for, for your time to leave, for the night team to come in. Whereas, like, in radiology, like, you're working the entire day, man. Like, mm. it's, it's nonstop, right? So, like, I, I would describe it as, um, like, taking, like, a USM exam like every day <laughs> it's like eight hours you're just like 100 percent right? yeah but I, I I think also like your your mind like adapts to that and it becomes easier like I remember as an R1 like I would go home I'd have a huge headache like I would just need to like take a nap but like now I can go through like a 12 hour overnight shift and I'll be fine like it doesn't oh, wow. phase me anymore like human beings are adaptable man like you, that's you, so true people can do like insane hours in surgery like people can do the same thing in radiology like it you just get better with time yeah so it, it is it is something that you know is like a consideration but i don't think that's something that should dissuade you from joining the field if anything it's a good thing because the more volume is mean that we're always going to have a job <laughs> yeah 100 yeah. percent exactly the other con that chat gpt mentioned is uh having a sedentary nature of a job mm. <laughs> i cannot believe like i'm sure ergonomics is like number one topic mentioned on day one is that right (laughs) so this is the thing um yes it can be bad um you don't want to be sitting down all day but thankfully here like we have standing desks in all of our reading room so if you want to stand like more than like you're encouraged to do so (laughs) (laughs) yeah and like ergonomics wise I don't really know, like, a ton of people who have, like, issues. Um, mm. I know, like, like some people may develop, like, some wrist issues. Oh, yeah. Like, they're holding the dictaphone the whole day. But I think if you're just, like, smart about it and, like... Well, the yeah. mouse, too, though, right? Yeah, the mouse, too. The thing is, though, like, a lot of radiologists, like, we have all of our own equipment. Like, for me, like, I bring my own mouse to work mm-hmm. just because it's, like, a fancy mouse that I have with, like, yeah. good ergonomics. And, yes, like, yes, yes. And, like, short keys and things like that. 
It's like a lot of radiologists, like they're good. Like they'll bring like their like pad or like whatever to make sure like the wrist is oh comfortable. My God. So it's like those are all like small That's things so that you funny. can work around, man. <laughs> like everyone has like their own gadgets that they use to make themselves. That's better. actually funny, man. If I saw a group of like nerds with their own like special mouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh dude i don't go anywhere without that mouse, dude man. that's so funny man <laughs> oh man so okay cool 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 yeah. so you, um yeah i'm sure i'm to be honest I'll, however true that is i've never seen an unfit radiologist yet dude that's what i'm i'm saying yeah like most radiologists i know are like skinny and like yeah they're yeah, they're yeah. runners at least yeah, bro yeah, yeah. like you look good bro it's because we got time to exercise when we get home we're not exhausted <laughs> <laughs> just unlike everybody else we actually have the time to ever get exercise no that's really cool that's okay that's really good so um the last thing i'm most concerned about and i think a lot of people are concerned about is ai taking over your job yep, yep, yep. i think there was yep. proof that AI was able to successfully pass the yeah. radiology board exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The thing that you took, <laughs> what, four years to like get prepared for. Yeah. So they're like, they would pass that exam and be board certified to do radiology. Mm. Um, so what do you have to say about the future in terms of AI and the field of radiology? Yeah. So I think first, based off of the trajectory of the field right now, like with the volumes that are increasing in the like exponential manner that they are, I think it's it's clear to every radiologist that we need some help, right? Yeah. Whether that be more radiologists, which might be harder to do, right? Just because um, in terms of like how many residents are applying and things like that, the other solution is to have some help from AI, right? Mm. And there are a lot of ways that um, AI can help the radiologist without necessarily taking over its job, right? Because mm you have to think about what is the job of the radiologist, right? Is our job just to highlight specific findings, which the AI can do great, right? Because like we already have applications where it will flag whether it thinks that there's intracranial hemorrhage, it will flag whether it thinks there's a pulmonary embolism, it will flag whether it thinks there's a stroke. Like we already are using those applications right now. Wow. Yeah, and um, like that's fine. Like if it can pick up, it does have its own issues like it's very sensitive so like a lot of the times it calls intracranial hemorrhage it's actually just like a calcification in the choroid you know mm. so like it, it, it's better for for it to be hypersensitive and overcall things than to for miss sure. stuff, right for sure and obviously the radiologist can know like oh that's not real right but it, it does help us in like especially when we're busy overnight right because you do, maybe you don't have um enough time to like look through everything as carefully as you would during the day and just having like that um, like extra layer of security behind you. Because like when I look at a PE scan, I'm not changing the way I look at it because I know AI is also looking at it. I still look at it the same way. But like when I call it negative and the AI also calls it negative, like it makes me a little bit more comfortable. Like, all right, like I know this is like a negative scan, right? If it calls something positive, I'm obviously gonna scrutinize that and think like, this is actually positive, this is actually real. And then I can make the judgment whether I agree with it or not. So it is tremendously helpful in that regard. Another thing that it can really help with is like measuring things, right? And like lung nodules, especially, is like an application where like you're you get a lot of scans in seat in uh, chest where you're just like following lung nodules, right? You waste a lot of time like measuring every small lung nodule. The radio uh, radiology applications that can do that with AI, like it makes my life so much easier. I can get through a scan mm. in five minutes as opposed to like ten minutes. You know, mm -hmm. that just makes me more efficient. And like what we've talked about so far is just like findings, right? It can make this finding. But can the AI take the patient's clinical information, the history, compared to prior exams, use the laboratory data, and come up with a differential diagnosis at this point? No, I can't. Mm. It absolutely cannot do that. Um, like taking into the clinical context of like what's going on with the patient, yeah. right? Until it has the ability to do that, like I don't think radiologists are in trouble at all. All. Mm. And even then, right, in terms of like a liability standpoint, are these AI companies going to be the ones that take liability if their program misses something? No. There's obviously yeah. going to have to be a radiologist, a human being that they're going to have to blame, right? <laughs> yeah. So like there's going to be a radiologist that's going to be checking everything. So when AI does get that good, which it could potentially in the next 50, however many years, thankfully probably not in my career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably not in anyone's career in this generation. Um, 
they're still going to be radiologists around, right? And, you know, the radiologist's job is ever-evolving, right? Because, like, the days where oh, they yeah. used to, like, look at films, like, on the actual, um, the view box, like, on actual paper films and, like, CTs were also looked at that way where, like, every single slice was, like, put on the x-ray film. Like, those days are gone, right? Our job is, like, continuously evolving, like, and with AI, like, helping us in those regards, I think it will continue to evolve, and we're always going to find a way to be valuable clinically. Oh, and yeah. Whether that's, it's the same way that we're doing it, like we are today, because it's not how we were doing it 50 years ago. Or it's completely different. So I think it has the potential to change, but I don't think the radiologist's job is ever going to become obsolete. Mm. If anything, it's going to become more efficient and it's going to become more valuable clinically because we have a lot more tools at our disposal. That's really cool. Won't did you say that it would decrease the amount of radiologists needed, though? It could. It could. Yeah. But we're nowhere... Not in our generation? We're nowhere near that point. Because, yeah, yeah. like, right now, like, yeah. we, we need all the help that we can get. Yeah. Right? So a med student should really consider no, I do not AI's so. role in the And, future. like, if you, if you talk to, like, people who are actually... Like, we have represent representatives from AI Doc, like the company that does a lot of the AI programs for our packs. Like, they come and talk to us, and, like, they know that we are a team. Like, it's 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 not like, oh, like you guys need to start, like, looking for other jobs. Like, we're going to replace you. It's always, like, what can we do to make your lives easier, right? So there's all, like, this ongoing discussion between IT people who are developing these programs. And a lot of those people who are developing their programs guess what? They're radiologists who have an IT background, right? Mm. So it's like, it's a very um, like symbiotic relationship where it's like, mm -hmm. what can we do to make this better for the patient? Right. To decrease the amount of misdiagnoses, to become more accurate, to become more efficient. It's, it's, I've never heard anyone who's like actually in the field say that, oh, like radiologist jobs are going to, they're going to be gone. It's always like people from the fringes who yeah. don't exactly know what a radiologist does. Like the amount of synthesis of information that we have to do to generate a reasonable differential diagnosis based off of the clinical context of the patient, based right. off of their history, right. and to put that in a structured format in a report that is easily di digestible by the clinician so they can understand it and take action upon the information that right. they're being you yeah. know, given. So like a lot of 100%. that, like we're not, we're not near, we're yeah. not anywhere near that at this point. I, it's very, in other words, you're saying like, AI has does not have subjectivity to it. Like yeah. let, interpreting images is a lot more subjective yeah. than you think. Right. That board exam is like a standardized question. Yeah, like it also you know? passed the USMLE, right? Does that mean yeah. we should stop training doctors? Right. <laughs> good, no, good rebuttal. Yeah, right. absolutely. So, at, at the end of the day, man, like medicine is a very humanistic experience. Oh yeah, and it's a very humanistic field. There always has to be some type of human touch, right? And that applies to clinical medicine, that applies to radiology, that applies to like pathology. You have to like know what's going on with the patient as a whole. And I think once you start to threaten that with like completely taking over like a, a huge aspect of the medical field with, you know, AI or whatever, whatever it is, I think you're doing a disservice to the patient. So I think it always has to have that human touch. And I think that's what, you know, will keep medicine as a whole functioning even you know, for millennia, whenever technology like, oh, yeah. replaces everything else, you know? Yeah. So, Damn, Dr. Rashid, <laughs> I appreciate you, man. This is awesome. I think if, I think that anybody who was considering radiology, like, you make a solid argument for it, man. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm, like, so satisfied with my field. I'm so happy in radiology. And if I were to go back and do it again, I would 100% choose radiology again. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for joining me, man. Ugh. <laughs> All right. Alhamdulillah. <laughs>